Hi, and welcome back to another Surfshark update video. Today's update roundup is a rather brief one due to just how many announcements we had last month. So if you missed our last video, go check it out. I'll leave it in the link below. But for today, we still got things to talk about. So let's get right into it. Let's start with a new update coming to the Surfshark Windows app. Version 5.1 is now available for download on the website, and it includes some neat changes and fixes. First things first, Surfshark's new tool, Alternative ID, has been integrated into the app via the tab option. And by the way, if you haven't tried or heard of Alternative ID yet, please do. It's a really great privacy tool that will help you create online accounts and protect data that even a VPN cannot hide. Another neat change was a new redesigned tray menu. Now, I bet some of you watching right now didn't even know that such a menu existed until now, but if you right click on the tray icon located in the bottom right corner, you'll get this small menu where you can easily customize your VPN settings without having to fully open the app. It's not something you'd use every day, but it's certainly nice to have for quick actions such as enable or disable the kill switch feature, for instance, or clean web, or connect or disconnect from the VPN. So definitely try it out and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. With version 5.1, developers have also addressed some of the kill switch issues when using the OpenVPN protocol. Next up, Surfshark iOS app has received update 3.13, which brings the newly updated VPN dashboard that we talked about in our last video. Let me quickly go over some of the highlights of this update, or at least my personal favorite ones. First is the fact that you can see your enabled settings after dragging this connect box here. For example, if you have clean web enabled, you'll see that being displayed. If you are using WireGuard or OpenVPN protocol, you will also see that because it will show up now. Second, you can also clear your recent used VPN locations list with this clear button, which is something that was not possible before. Third, changing your Quick Connect VPN country is much faster with the newly added change button right over here. Lastly, and this is subjective, mind you, but I really dislike the fact that the connection feedback pop-up would take the whole screen. Now it's much more streamlined and is not as intrusive. But speaking of the new UI changes, let's discuss them in more detail. The new dashboard has been available for Windows and Android for about a month or so, and the Surfshark team has been gathering all the feedback they can regarding this redesign. First of all, let's start with the good. The overall feedback on the desktop variant of the app has been very positive. It seems that the extra information being displayed, like the amount of data being uploaded and downloaded is useful, as well as seeing which features and settings you have enabled and being able to just turn them on or off by clicking on them is saving a lot of clicks. On Android's app side of things, however, you did have some feedback. One big confusion I've seen is that on mobile app, the bottom navigation menu seems to change its position when switching between home VPN or settings tabs. This will be addressed in the upcoming updates and this menu will be brought back even if you go to the home tab. One other thing I've seen in terms of the new mobile UI redesign is not knowing where to find your newly changed IP address after connecting to the VPN. So to demonstrate by clicking on the VPN tile from home, you will be taking to the VPN dashboard. Here, by dragging this bottom menu up, you will get all the necessary information you need. So overall, the Surfshark team is aware of your feedback and will be making the necessary changes in the next upcoming updates, so stay tuned. Speaking from experience, I know that big redesigns on various apps do take some time to get used to, and also it takes time for the developers to fine tune it to suit users' needs. By the way, if there's one thing everyone in the security world can agree upon is that 2FA is not perfect. It's definitely one of the best ways to make your account more secure, but having to punch in a code every time you want to log in is not convenient, I must admit. Well, if you ever used Surfshark Alert, you'd know that you can only access it if your Surfshark account had 2FA enabled on it until today. With the recent update, you can now access and use Surfshark Alert without the need of two-factor authentication. Now, this does mean that you will be limited in seeing sensitive data like your passwords, payment details, email breaches, etc. So it's still recommended to have 2FA enabled in order to fully utilize Alert, but this change should definitely help more people to try this tool and hopefully get a good use out of it. Surfshark Linux app users can now enjoy the newly released 1.5.2 update. Here, the changes include the new two-tone dashboard, a new feature for the Linux app, the ability to automatically launch Surfshark in minimized mode, if that's what you prefer, 
and there have also been changes made to the overall app framework under the hood, which should help with distro compatibility. Though you will notice that now the context menu will open when you right click on the status icon instead of left click. One last important thing to note is that you can now only use the app with this latest version. So if you have an older app, you may not be able to connect. You can update the Surfshark app via the top status menu, or if you prefer to feel like a cool hacker, you can also do it via the terminal by typing in the sudo apt update command. And that is all the Surfshark app updates for this month. However, let's quickly go over our highlighted community poll where we asked you guys, which Wi-Fi signal do you prefer? 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz? Now the answer might be obvious, higher, faster, better, right? Well, that's what you voted and at least with 80% of you preferring the 5 gigahertz connection. However, I think that 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signals are still very much needed. They're slower for sure, but they have much better range compared to the 5 gigahertz band, which in some cases can be the only available network. But let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And speaking of the comments, it's time for the comment of the day, which comes from the user name Mobile Avenue, asking, when are you guys making an app for Apple TV? And the good news here that I wanted to share and confirm is that Surfshark will be working on an app for Apple TV. This became possible thanks to the news that we shared a couple months ago about the fact that Apple TV OS 17 will now have native VPN support. However, the timeline for when exactly it's coming is still not clear yet. The official tvOS version should be coming in September. So if you own one of these TVs, stay tuned and of course, subscribe to the channel to get the latest updates when the app becomes available. But that'll be all for now. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below about any of the topics discussed today, whether it be the VPN dashboard on all platforms or how the alert tool no longer needing a 2FA to access it. And also, I'm curious to know what you think about Surfshark finally coming to Apple TV. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.